everybody, Mrs. Danny here. Hope y'all are doing good. All right, so we get to start a new unit in your book tonight. We're actually in unit two. And unit two actually starts on page 56. That's where the comic starts. Um, but the section tonight we're gonna be working on starts on page 58. Leaders, that's 58 in your book as well. So we're gonna be discussing, unit two is about the Bible. And we're going to be discussing a lot in the next few weeks. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Bible is true and without error. Now, you know, I've given a lot of different council time messages through the years, and many you've heard many of them. And a lot of times I'll use that slide, you know, uh, the Bible, what is our standard? You know, when we're trying to decide what's right and wrong, what is our standard? The Bible. Now we're going to discuss, is that a good standard? Because you really need to have a good standard to decide how to live your life. Your memory verse is Psalm 119, 160. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Now, when you think about it, that's a fairly bold statement, isn't it? The word, God's word, the Bible, is true always, and it'll last forever. That's pretty bold. Now, as believers, we have faith that the Bible is true. We know it's true. But here's where it gets really great. We as believers actually have more than just our faith. We have a lot of factors to prove, a lot of evidence that the Bible is true. So what's interesting is, you know, every event in the Bible is a true event. I don't like using the word Bible stories because that implies it's like a fairy tale, like Cinderella or something Disney. These are not made up stories. These are actual events. These are things that actually happened, kind of like a history book. You know, um, many of you guys know how much I love history, but I have this really cool book. I have several books actually, but this, but I have this really cool book about the Titanic. And you know, it talks about these people that were on the ship and everything and built the ship. And here's the thing though, we know these people live. These people actually existed. Just like the people in the Bible. People in the Bible were real people. They had lives, they had homes, they may have had pet, pet dogs and cats. They had children, many of them. They actually existed. And just like we have a ship at the bottom of the ocean to tell us that we can study to learn more about the Titanic and the tragedy that happened, we have a lot of archeological evidence that supports what the Bible talks about. There's just a wealth of it. Uh, look at Bethlehem, this little, ta little town of Bethlehem, <laughs> the ruins there. We can learn a lot about where Jesus was born. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, critics try to claim that there's a lot in the Bible that just never existed. And it's so funny because we keep finding things that prove the Bible is true. Uh, one of the claims that I've heard, uh, used to hear was, oh, there was no King David. That, that's just all made up. There was no city of David. It ne King David never existed. He's, ju he's just some, some, yeah, it's so funny. In 1993 in Northern Israel, they found this. This was found, I believe in the city of, in, in, um, Tel, Tel Dan, I forget the name of the city exactly it was found in, but it talked about the king of Israel and the king of the house of David. They actually found the city of David. Whoops, it existed. And then we have people who once tried to say that the Assyrian kingdom never existed. And that in Isaiah 20 verse one, the Bible talks about Sargon, the king of Assyria. Oh no, that, that never existed, that's all made up. But if, in 1843, in Northern Iraq, they actually found the ruins of his city. And not just the city, but you see the picture is from his palace, the king of Assyria's palace. Unfortunately, a lot of this has been destroyed by ISIS and other terrorists, which is really very sad. But this is archeological evidence proved that these places existed. And then we have this is really interesting. This is called, and I know I'm gonna get the, the, the pronunciation messed up, so forgive me. The Cylinder of Nabdias. This was found in the late 1800s. What they tried to claim was Daniel, in the book of Daniel, he made up about the, uh, the name, the king of Bel King Belthazar. This guy never existed. Well, what they found was the cylinder 
from another kingdom actually talking about Bel <laughs> Belthazar. And so, oh, Daniel didn't make him up. He actually existed. Um, I also was reading many, many years ago, they tried to claim that the high priest Caiaphas, now Caiaphas was the one that oversaw the trial of Jesus. They said, there's no proof this guy ever existed. Well, then in about 1990, they found this ossuary. By the way, an ossuary is where they, is a box or a container that they keep bones in, human remains, kind of like an urn. But anyway, they found this ossuary that had Caiaphas's name on it. Caiaphas, the high priest. So, oops, he did exist. And then we have uh, this dedication stone in Caesarea. Now this is neat because at one time they tried to claim that Pontius Pilate, who you know, oversaw the trial of Jesus as well, that he never existed. Well, they were tearing down a theater, or they came across this theater, the ruins of this theater in Caesarea, and they found this dedication stone that's, that was thanking Pontius Pilate, the perfect of the Roman territory. Now, <laughs> oh, he existed. Now, here's the thing. I could go on and on and on. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of books about all the archaeological evidence. Uh, honestly, if you want to get more information, I suggest talking to Mr. Fraser. Oh, he is a wealth of information on this, especially King Herod. It's amazing just studying under him about King Herod. But anyway, but another reason how, or another way we know the Bible is true is because this consistency of the message. You know, if you've ever played the whisper game, this is where you whisper something to someone. By the time it gets to the other room, it's totally different. The Bible has stayed consistent. Now, it was written over 1,500 to 2,000 year span, and it was actually written by 40 different men. Now, 2 Peter 1.21 tells us, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The people, the men who wrote the Bible weren't writing what they wanted to write. They were writing what God told them to write. The best way I know how to explain this is essentially they were God's secretaries. They wrote what he said to write. We, we know that the Bible has stayed true down through the ages for several reasons, but the two main ones I'm going to focus on is, first of all, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, we've talked in this class about the Dead Sea Scrolls before. These were found back in about the 1960s, 40s, 60s, something like that. And these scrolls, when they took these scrolls, were about 2,000 years old. And when they started comparing the scrolls to the scripture we have now, they found they matched perfectly. God's word had been preserved all through these thousands of years. Another way we know that the Bible is true is because of the consistency of the message. If you study the whole Bible, not just the New Testament, not just the old, not just one or two books, but all of it, you will find a consistent message. And it's consistent in that the Bible talks about God's moral laws, man's rebellion against God's moral laws, and God's plan of salvation for us. That has not changed. And it's pretty consistent all through the Bible. Now, we also in the Bible have a lot of eyewitness accounts. And that's very interesting. If you ever watch any kind of court TV, or if you're interested in the law, you know that a trial, a, tri a person can, can be convicted or set free due to the testimony of eyewitness accounts. And in the Bible, it talks about these eyewitness accounts. There were many of the disciples were there when Jesus was crucified. Luke 24, uh, so many saw and, and spoke to the risen Christ. If you look in 1 Corinthians 15, I think it's three through eight, yeah, over 500 people saw him. So you're talking about eyewitness accounts. What's also interesting about the Bible is we know it's true because so many of the prophecies in the Old Testament have come true. Prophecies, they, they predicted the future. Just on Jesus, we're just talking about Jesus. In the Old Testament, there are over 400 predictions, prophecies about Jesus that came true. Just to name a few, Micah 5.2 said he would be born in Bethlehem. Yeah, he was. It's not like he could control that. Isaiah 7.14 said he would be born of a virgin. Jeremiah 31.15 even predicted 
uh, King Herod killing all the children two and under, trying to kill the king of Jews. Uh, uh, Isaiah 11, 1 said the Messiah would be a Nazarene. Uh, I could go on and on and on. I could go through all 400 of them. The point is, all the prophecies, all the predictions the Bible has made has been true up thus far, for especially about Jesus. The Bible was, and, but why was the Bible written? Why did God feel the need, or why did God want his, his word written down? Honestly, guys, the Bible was written for us. You know, it's to help us to know who God is, to, to know who Jesus is, to know how to have a relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible was written for us, for, for our benefit. And it's not a secret. It's not a mystery we got to figure out. It's not something that we have to pay money to learn or we have to do certain things or certain prayers to get the knowledge of. It's, it's, it's there for us. It was written for us. John 20, verse 31. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So the Bible is for us, for us to study. But here's the thing, the more we study God's word and the more we pray, the better we get to know God and to understand what he wants for us and how to live our life. And so we're gonna be spending this whole unit on the Bible. We're gonna be discussing a lot of great things. This is one of my favorite units to do every year. And I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. And I just want to let you guys know we miss you. I hope everyone is doing well. Please keep up with your sections. If you need anything, go ahead. You have the information again. Call me, email me, text me. And I love you guys, and I hope to see you real soon. Take care.